Folks, it's official. The final major update for 2023 is out now in full, and it's a mixed bag to say the least. I've heard that the short is irrelevant, the skin's lackluster, and the lack of much needed buffs was still somehow ignored, but hey, that's clay for you lately, unfortunately. But me, I'm just a messenger. So here's a refresher. If you didn't unlock them in the beta, you have got about 160 days to survive in order to obtain all 15 insight points for either character showcased here today, with several coming early enough to mess with the good stuff, of course. But my favorite bit in this batch was Clay's willingness to have unique unlock mechanics for these new skills, like in Wigford's Tree, for example. Keep that up. And perhaps even lock them per world, too. But whatever they decide, it's time to spotlight Wigfrid's entire skill itself, starting with some upgrades to her battle spears. More specifically, two upgrades to how battle spears add to her inspiration meter there. From left to right, we have the default gains versus the skilled ones, and they're significant enough in and of themselves for sure. But the real reason for specking in spears are these puppies, the Elding Spear skills. For one thing, they will grant you access to the not inexpensive Elding Spear themselves here that are quite lethal in Wickford's hand, sure, but will do real damage for all, especially when the world is wet. As yes, they are electric spears with the damage modifier built in already, and yes, they come with a special attack too. Uncharged is going to be about a three second cooldown, however the biggest bit is that landing these hits actually repairs the darn things. So then, use it wisely to hunt the small stuff, or for fun if you want to cross some gaps. You decide. Me, I will likely be waiting until I can charge the things, as then the true fun begins. Charged Elding Spears jump to 200 uses total, have a cooldown of one and a half seconds, repair four uses per special attack, and even have a sneaky 20% speed boost attached to them. Oh yes, they're good, but we're only just getting started. As if you are more of a defensive type, then best spec into the helmet skills instead, as then all battle helms will become more durable than ever. Now they won't say that they offer more durability, but as you can see, they will be taking way more of a beating for us over time, so there you go. But our reward for actually going down this tree, you ask? Well, a new battle helmet, complete with its own skills, the Commander's Helm. Far, far cheaper than it was in the beta, and no longer locked till winter at that. The armor offers 80% protection, 683 durability, respectable wetness protection, decent enough insulation from the cold, and built-in knockback resistance. Continue the skillet, however, and the thing not only gains some plain art defense for them pesky endgame mobs, but the ability to regenerate as well. Be mindful though, it will only regen roughly 5 durability every now and then if we are at full health. Take notes, as it's now time for one of the most OP items that Clay has ever introduced, the Battle Rond. Complete either side of the arsenal tree, and its skills unlock for you. Proceed to murder some beefalo and do some mining, and this unique shield will be yours. A shield that offers 85% protection, 420 durability, the ability to attack at 63.8 damage a bash, blocking mechanics, and more. But how much more? Plenty, as its skills increase our blocking timer to 4 seconds over the original two, make it for less misses, alongside additional damage on our next hits when we do successfully block incoming damage. Something we can do every three and a half seconds or so, mind. So use it well, as the rest of Wickford Tree is probably going to be a bit of a letdown. Yeah, sure, Mystic Resilience is nice to have for a tank who can add to her Lunar Slash Shadow tanking capabilities in the endgame, so I'm not too upset at that. But the Beefalo Tree here? The Beefalo Tree should have never existed, everybody. I mean, it works as all domestication actions will be 15% more efficient for sure, Beeflows will let us ride them 30% longer, and we can now gain passive inspiration with Noble Mount 3, even when we aren't freaking moving, but... Really? I've always gotten what Clay was going for here, but it just doesn't make sense in practice. Even with the Battle Saddle showing up with this unique ability to grant a Beeflow 40% damage reduction and all that. It's just... Not worth it. It's way too many points spent for essentially nothing more than a non-synergized tree. But hey, at least Beefalo Horns are now used to unlock our next skill, A eh? Warrior Surprise is next, and is a new battle song stinger that Wickford can sing to quote-unquote instantly revive two survivors within its radius. Not bad, but still too expensive to use, even if it does have its six-minute fighting words cooldown. So the battle canister is gonna make up for it, right? Hmm, a bit, I guess. Have six battle songs in your inventory at any time and you'll gain access to a craft that's a portable song holder from here on out so enjoy and lastly them fighting words i mentioned 
seeing 10 battle stingers to unlock it, and suddenly all stingers gain a cooldown of 15 seconds over their original inspiration costs, other than reprise, of course, so take advantage. But to wrap up Wigfrid comes her affinities and a sneaky tweet to an oldie. Both affinities lead to their respective battle songs that are cheaper than they were in the beta, and provide 10% of more damage resistance to their respective sides, in addition to the usual damage increases, so be mindful there. But also note a change to the fireproof falsetto that now has everyone in its radius being completely fireproof. Good stuff. No, seriously, that's the good stuff because half of Willow Shree is Bernie's and Clay did him dirty. Yeah, still, let us talk controlled burning. It's three skills in one, almost, as now fires won't spread if started by Willow. Any ignited mob that dies will drop smoldering loot instead of ash. And lastly, every hit with their lighter and or torch will instantly ignite the target. But why care about the latter? Simple, burn duration and firefighter here. The former increases how long a mob stays ablaze by nearly three three times the default, leading to far more fire damage over time, of course. However, a very sneaky tweak is that this entire tree slowly increases fire tick damage itself, so it's even better than you think. Here's the default damage, followed by the damage taken by stuff with just burn duration unlocked, and finally with all three skills, all firing on all cylinders. Not bad, and definitely preferable to a light radius increase. Yes, these skills work. Very well, too, but they're still absolutely pointless in 2023, and nothing can convince me otherwise. To continue, then, Hungry Lighter and Ember Tender go hand in hand, and are the skills we should really get behind, as absorbing fires to stop burning structures and loot is invaluable, and these new ethereal embers are our ticket to the fire spells from here on out. All ignited mobs will drop them, and the bigger the mob, the more embers, of course. Oh. And yes, we can still refuel the lighter like we could in the beta, however it's now all through the embers and not just the absorption. Regardless, with embers in hand, we can now cast spells, and our first will always be flame charge. It will set anything above it ablaze while dealing more fire damage over time compared to our lighters, so take advantage. Next comes combustion, which is the exact same thing, but for a horde of mobs instead. The fireball spell is a unique dwarf star that lasts for a full day, perks and all, and lastly, burning Frenzy grants us 25% damage increase to all mobs that are on fire, which is very, very nice, but not as crazy as our affinities, of course. Shadow Tendrils seek out five hostiles, dealing 100 damage each, but it's unfortunately broken currently, while the Lunar Flame deals 750 damage a blast and can be aimed. The former has an 8 second cooldown, while this guy suffers a 13 one, unfortunately. But what's truly unfortunate is Bernie's Tree. Even if it has been tweaked since the beta, Bernie typically activates near 20 sanity, but with the two barely sane skills, we can actually get him active at 60. Then again, with the new hot-headed skill, Bernie can actually be made to fight lunar and shadow mobs even when we're fully sane, and that's actually quite intriguing for the fuel weaver bot, honestly, especially when we can call on the big guy at will now, it seems. But as we continue here, we get a measly one health per second regen at the cost of two insight, a mere 600 health increase overall to Bernie at the cost of two insight almost pointless speed buffs at you guessed it two insight and then burning burning a skill that does see him reflecting 50 damage to all attackers but that really only means anything for shadows pretty much so factor in the affinities and it's just not great folks i mean i do love the looks of bernie and ashley and the planar defense will be useful but nah not one up against all the fire stuff that is but hey at least clay did remember the scale mail i suppose as it now synergizes with all of willow's fire skills skills. So have fun. As the wrap-up 2023 comes a fresh face, everyone. Found on a new island randomly out there on the high seas, but mostly in swell water's mind. The island is small at first, but instantly grows come a day in the winter or so. Snag some three fish there in the ice hole and say hello to the frost jaw. Don't stop together's newest NPC slash boss. Yes, it's a boss fight. And yes, they have a predictable pattern that they will follow throughout the whole fight, but I'm not really gonna spoil a new boss fight for ya, especially not one this fun. Beat him though, when he will trade bootlegs for ocean fish, but only up to five times mind. But we can then toss these while in a boat, and we will create whirlpools that will instantly teleport us across the freaking ocean, quote null. No, not kidding. So have fun, but do be warned everyone that there's a new slipping mechanic on this island now, so short bursts of speed is my advice. But regardless, there you have it folks, the final guide of 2023, and you know, that's actually pretty bittersweet to say. More update content is still on the way though, so do keep an eye on this space. Thanks for everything, happy holidays, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.